G'day guys, welcome back to True Cricket Footy, Cricket Footy. Uh, sorry, I just recorded a Glenn Maxwell video about the most insane cricket game I've ever seen. So yeah, no, I need to stick to my own lane. Welcome back to True Footy, and today we are going to be doing another redraft, this time of the 2016 AFL Draft. So obviously, if you're not aware already, uh, I have been doing a redraft series all the way back from 2022 to now 2016. The premise of this video is to redraft the draft based on what we know today about those players. So in other words, to get into the minds of recruiters, if they could redraft that draft, how would the order go if it was done today? Now, these are always pretty challenging and this one was no exception. Uh, quite an even draft, probably not so heavy on the absolute top end talent with a couple of exceptions for sure. But obviously, as you get further and further back into drafts, like when I started um, making this redraft series, you kind of paid a little bit more attention to where players were drafted um, in terms of the, where they actually went on draft night. But as it gets further and further back, these players are more established and uh, the further back you go, the more irrelevant it was where they were drafted. So there's quite a lot of players from the rookie draft that were either in this video quite high in some cases or you know probably contenders to be in the next batch as well the rookie draft from 2016 as an aside is kind of nuts but what we're going to do is get into the redraft now um, starting from Essendon at pick one and we're going to do the top 20 picks before I start if you could do me a favor and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy my content that would be much appreciated so let's kick it off with the Essendon football club who took Andrew McGrath in the real life draft and uh, after a little bit of consideration, I've decided to pick Tom Stewart as the new number one pick for Essendon. Now, he was a mature age selection for Geelong uh, pretty late in this draft. I think it was pick 40 in the end. And he's won five All-Australian jumpers as a defender five of the last six years, uh, including you know last year's or this year's most recent. He's played 148 games. He's a premiership player. He really just, there is no other player that has a resume like Tom Stewart. And he's so consistently good that even as an intercept defender, he would be pick one in this redraft. So we go to pick two at GWS. This one is where it gets a little bit more even and probably a little bit more subjective. So they took Tim Taranto in the real draft. And to be honest, I think I'm going to get, take Tim Taranto again for them, who obviously doesn't play for him uh, anymore, but he won a best and fairest in a grand final year for the Giants and a best and fairest this year for Richmond as well. And statistically had his best season with 29 disposals a game and six clearances this year, uh, seven tackles a game as well, and has become a pretty well-rounded midfielder in general. So in a draft that lacks top-end talent, Taranto is probably still the next best available. Next pick, the Brisbane Lions originally took Hugh McCluggage with this selection. Now, I'm going to give it to Tim English from the Western Bulldogs, who again has had a career best season. He went originally at pick 19, of course, to the Western Bulldogs, and this year won his first All Australian jumper as, uh, you know, the best Ruckman, the best performed Ruckman in the league this year. Now, it's important not to rely too much on stats when doing this analysis. I do find it helpful. But when you consider that Tim English averaged 40 hitouts and 25 disposals a game this year, those are really top-notch numbers, and therefore he is justifiably at least a top three pick, potentially better. So at pick four, we had on... Uh, it was Gold Coast originally. Uh, I'm going to put in a bid for Collingwood's Josh Dacos here. So Josh Dacos would be the fourth player selected in my redraft. He was originally a father-son bid at around pick 57. I think it was GWS from what I can gather was the team that bid on him. And of course, Collingwood matched. But now he's a premiership player, uh, made the All-Australian team this year. And to cap it all off, was a best and fairest in Collingwood's flag side this year, rewarded with a massive contract as well. He's had a great year. Again, it's pretty even, so you could argue that someone like a McCluggage could go here as well, but I think Dacos has pipped him on recent form. So Gold Coast back on the clock, and uh, with this selection, ignoring the bid for a second, they took uh, Ben Ainsworth, and now they're going to take Hugh McCluggage, who is probably the next best talent. He was originally taken at pick three, like I said, to the Brisbane Lions. He is now their vice captain and a very, very good outside midfielder for him. In terms of raw production this year, he probably went backwards a little bit, at least in numbers, but he was still second in the league for goal assists, which is a pretty damn good stat. So pretty even draft, but Hugh McCluggage is definitely the player I would take next which takes us to Carlton at pick six. Now, they would love to have this draft again because they took Sam Petrovsky-Seaton with this original pick, and now they're going to upgrade it to a better version in Shy Bolton, again, from Western Australia. So Shy Bolton originally went at pick 29 in this year's draft. He's now a dual premiership player at Richmond. 
He was all Australian in 2022 and is one of the more damaging half forward slash midfielders that we have in the competition. Average about 22 touches a game this year for 14 brown low boats. So a really top end talent, I would say. At pick seven, the Gold Coast Suns, they had quite a number of selections in this year's top 10. Uh, they originally took Jack Scrimshaw, who uh, ended up going to Hawthorne. Now I'm going to take Nick Larkey. Now, Nick Larkey was originally drafted at pick 73 of this draft, which is kind of nutty considering the resume he has at AFL level and also considering that, you know, with all due respect to North Melbourne, They've been a pretty average team in that time, but he's kicked 191 goals from 94 games. And, you know, this year alone, kicking 71 goals in a season where they just got off the bottom in the last round is a monstrous effort. And he was awarded or rewarded with a All-Australian jumper this year. So he could potentially climb these rankings as time goes on. But again, for the key position players, they're still sort of getting into their prime. So it's a little bit apples and oranges still. At pick eight, we have the Fremantle Football Club, and they originally took Griffin Logue with this selection, and now they're going to take their own boy in Sean Darcy. Now, Sean Darcy was originally taken with pick 38 in this year's draft, and has proven to be a massively value selection there. Hugely powerful ruckman. He averaged 39 hitouts a game this year, so quite dominant in the tap stakes, and potentially an A-grade ruck as well, and I think it's only a matter of time before he becomes an All-Australian at some point. At pick nine, I have the Gold Coast Suns back again. And ignoring the fact that they just took a key forward, I am going to give them another key forward here. Again, this is kind of ignoring list needs when you're going this far back in time. Uh, but I'm going to take, instead of Will Brody, who they took originally, I'll take Mitch Lewis from the Hawthorne Footy Club, who's drafted at pick 76 in this year's draft. So another key forward that was taken really late and has proven to be a bit of a gem. Now, he's played 66 games for 120 goals. That is really, really good output for a young key forward. He's never played more than 15 games in a season. So I think it's one of those things where if he puts it together for a whole season, then you start seeing him climb the rankings a little bit. But tallies of 36 and 37 from 15 in his last two years, those are pretty impressive numbers. So Mitch Lewis does project as a high-level key forward, and you could expect him to move up these rankings provided he you know, uh, delivers on the potential. At pick 10, we have the Sydney Swans. Now, originally in this draft, they bid on Jack Bowes from the Gold Coast Suns, which is why I don't have another Gold Coast pick here because it was an academy match bid. Um, but instead of Jack Bowes, they went Ollie Florent. And this time, I've got them taking St. Kilda's Rowan Marshall again. Another player taken late. In fact, he was taken in pick 10 of the rookie draft of this particular year. He's played 91 games now, and now I think he's one of the best ruckmen going. And uh, he could have conceivably been All-Australian ruck this year, just a little bit behind English, but not too far behind. He averaged 27 hitouts and 21 disposals a game. And funnily enough, was the highest uh, fantasy player this year as well, which just shows how statistically he uh, impacts the game quite a lot. In pick 11, we have the North Melbourne Football Club, who originally took Jai Simpkin, and this time, with their time over, they'll take another late draft pick from this year in Luke Ryan, another mature age player as well from the Fremantle Football Club, taken at pick 66. Luke Ryan's had an understated and really good career. He's all Australian in 2020. He was the best and fairest for Fremantle again that year as well, and he's become a very sound defensive and strong intercept player as well. And stats-wise, he had a great year this year. It was one of his best, averaging about 24 disposals a game and eight marks as well. At pick 12, the West Coast Eagles originally took Daniel Venables, but now they're going to take the uh, original number one pick in Andrew McGrath. Now, McGrath, he won the AFL Players Association Best First Year Player in his debut season and sort of projected as a high-level midfielder. And now he's kind of settled into more being just a really good halfback who can roll through the midfield as well. He gets his 23 disposals a game. He's pretty composed. He's a consistent player. And uh, again, where the talent starts to thin out, he's probably the next best available one. At pick 13, you've got the Adelaide Crows, who originally took, uh, well, they first bid on Harry Perriman to the GWS Giants. That was matched, and then they took Jordan Gallucci at this selection. Now, in a redraft, I've taken uh, Jai Simpkin, who slid a little bit, but only a few picks. He was originally drafted at pick 12 to North Melbourne, of course. He's now their co-captain and had a couple of really good years for them there where he won their BNF in 2021 and 2022, but he's a little bit down on output this year. At his best, he was averaging around 27 touches a game for five clearances. I think he just averaged the 21 and four this year as well. So, you know, he's still a pretty good player. Andrew McGrath just probably nudges him for consistency. Um, but again, it's pretty thin, the, the barrier between those two. This is where I started having trouble in the draft because uh, you're kind of splitting hairs between a few talls that I think are really talented. But pick 14, uh, Port Adelaide Footy Club originally took Todd Marshall with this selection. It was a pretty good selection in hindsight. But this time I'll give him Oscar McInerney, who has become an important role player for the Brisbane Lions as their ruckman. He was originally taken pick 37 in this rookie draft. So again, you can see the talent that came out of the rookie draft specifically of this year. But this year he averaged 
uh, 34 hitouts a game, which made him the fourth highest ranked hitout player. And he won five and a half clearances a game for the Lions as well. So a good, important cog in that Brisbane team. Speaking of the Brisbane Lions, they're up next. And they originally took Jared Berry with the selection. And this time I've got them taking Jordan Ridley from the Essendon Football Club, who went at pick 22. So a slight upgrade on his position. Now, he has become quite a possession-winning tall defender. In 2020, he won the best and fairest for Essendon. Uh, he gets his 20 touches a game and seven and a half marks, which is pretty good output and you know production for you know a pretty tall defender. He's also capable of getting 30 plus a game. He's just a good, consistent player, and I think perhaps a little bit underrated outside of Essendon. At pick 16, it was pretty hard splitting these players, um, but Port Adelaide, instead of taking Sam Powell Pepper, who they took originally, I've got them taking Fremantle's Brennan Cox. Now, Fremantle did pretty well out of this draft, particularly in the second round. Brennan Cox was originally taken at pick 41, and he's become a very valuable intercept defender. And again, another player who's been rewarded with something like a six or seven year deal from the Fremantle Dockers last month, I think it was. But averaged eight marks a game this year, 17 touches. And I think in round one, he broke the Fremantle record for most marks in the game with 20. So really consistent player for the Dockers. And between him and Ridley, it was pretty tough. At pick 17, the Western Bulldogs entered the draft. They originally took Tim English with this selection. Again, a very good selection because he's three in this redraft. But this time I've got them taking Tyson Stengel. This one's a little tricky one. Again, another player out of the rookie draft. He went pick six, obviously to Richmond. Then he went to Adelaide for a little bit, if I'm not mistaken, and then it ended up at Geelong. So it's kind of been the last two seasons where he's kind of exploded. Obviously last year, 2022, he was all Australian, kicked 53 goals from 25 games. And I think he's still the first all Australian to ever have been a delisted free agent, which is outstanding. This year didn't quite match that up, put 27 from 19, but you get the feeling that in a redraft, he'd still be a valuable commodity and clubs would leap on him at least in the first round. So we're up to Sydney at pick 18. This pick was originally Will Hayward. And this time I've got them taking Todd Marshall, who's dropped a couple of selections. But uh, in the end, I think this was a good pickup for the Port Adelaide Footy Club. It was originally pick 16 to them. In his 97 game career, he's kicked 138 goals and just put up pretty consistent numbers over the last two years of 45 and 36. So a good productive key forward. Those obviously have a little bit more of a premium on them, so Todd Marshall would probably still go in the first round if this were redrafted. At pick 19, Essendon again re-entered the draft, having taken Tom Stewart. This time, again, I'm just going to go best available. This pick was Jordan Ridley, which was 22 at the time because there were more academy bids, but now they're taking Ben Ainsworth. Now, Ben Ainsworth was pick four in this draft, and he's become a bit of an understated quality high half forward who gets you 17 touches and a goal a game, uh, at least this year he did. For his output, he doesn't quite do enough to really elevate him higher than this, but he's still a pretty good player and would go again in the first round. At pick 20, this was tough. This was where I had to decide between five or six players and I decided to go with Ollie Florent here. This was the Brisbane Lions where they originally took Alex Witherden. Ollie Florent is an upgrade on that. He went pick 11 to the Sydney Swans, of course, where he still is, and has played 122 games. Now, he was drafted as a midfielder, never been a really high production player, now sort of more of a running defender, gets his 20 touches a game. Solid player, uh, but this is where I think the, the draft quality starts to drop off. Not a massively strong draft, but Ollie Florent makes my top 20. So... There we go, guys. That is my top 20. If it was redrafted today, as always, I look forward to your input and comments in the comment section below. And also let me know if you want me to keep this series going. I've got 2015 in mind next. Um, that one was a particularly strong draft, I think. And I'm also working on another couple of videos. But I'm also going to be uploading these in a weird order because I'm going away for a few days as well. So I've uploaded stuff ahead in time. Um, so you'll just have to wait and see. It'll be a surprise. But thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate your support and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.